Hola YouTube, my name is Ricardo Lino and I'm a wheel addict. What if I tell you that one of the best skaters in Europe just got his pro model? That's true, his name is Anthony Potier, he's Belgian and today we're gonna be talking about this skate right here, the FR, UFR, Anthony Potier, the Intuition Edition. So stay there and enjoy this video. Okay, so what do we have here? What we have here is the first aggressive skate from FR. And you might look at this boot and you might be familiar with the design of this boot. Well, obviously the boot, the shell, this plastic part here being used, it's a boot which is very, very, very similar to the free ride boot from FR, like their most known urban skate, the FR1, FR2, FR3, or even the FRX. The boot is very similar, but it has a couple of changes. Now, we are going to talk about what are some of those changes. We are going to also talk about how does it work and how does it feel. I'm going to start by saying that this video was only possible because of Bladeville. These skates were provided to me by Bladeville. And if you're looking into getting these skates, well, you can support this channel by supporting the supporters. So if you go to bladeville.com, you'll be able to find these skates and you can use code Lino and you are supporting this channel by doing it. Now, I need to tell you that the size that I have is a size 42, 43, and these would be different if I wouldn't get the Intuition version. This one that you see right here with the liner white on the inside, this is the Intuition version. When I got this skate, it was boot only. You can also buy it complete, but the way that I got it was boot only. If you buy it complete, it also comes with the frame from Anthony Potier, which is the flat frame. But, but I wanted to try this skate with the frames that I regularly skate. I do, as I said before, I do have that Anthony Potier frame. It's an aluminum frame. It is a bit taller. It's a flat 64 millimeter frame. So it's a frame that I really enjoy for some things, but it's not something that I skate on a daily basis. It's a very specific type of frame, which works very good. To be fully honest with you, I have not tried that frame here and I will explain you why I didn't test it here. Now, this is how you buy these as a boot only. Of course, it comes with these screws for the UFS. This is how it comes stock. And as I was saying, I got the size 43, but if I did get the version which is not 
with the intuition liner i would need to buy a different size which is a 43 44. what happens is when you use this liner which i'm going to take out right now this liner is very slim and because the liner is so slim it allows you to downsize on most skates so what they did with this is if you are on the size 43 which is where i am usually which is the us 10 or the uk 9 you are able to downsize to a smaller shell the shell is obviously the plastic part of the boot in case you didn't know so this allowed me to to use a skate that feels a lot snuggier now i heard of people that bought the 43 44 not the intuition version saying that it does feel very very good too which i believe <laughs> most of those people but i haven't tried it so i can't really talk about that I'm going to talk about the Intuition version and how I felt. So I'm going to start by the Intuition Liner. The Intuition Liner that you got on this skate, it's not the same as the V2 or not the newest one, it's the old black one. The main difference that I see here from this to the V2, which is the one that I have, is the V2 has a removable cuff. This whole area here that you might see with the stitching around, if you have the V2 skate liner, you are able to take this part with a velcro and you can even change it for something that it's foamier or for a different cuff that it's more plasticky but on these ones this is stitched it doesn't give you that option which in my opinion it's not really a problem other than that it doesn't feel that much different it does feel a bit thicker than the v2 but it does feel very premium even if it's not the premium version so I can't really complain at all about this. It reminds me a lot of the liner that comes on the Dam Intuition. I'm not sure if it's the same. I think the Dam Intuitions might be a bit thicker on the toe area, but I'm not 100% sure about that. What I can tell you is that this skate is priced at 250 with this liner, and I honestly don't know how they were able to make it because most of the Intuition liners are priced at 200 they are now at 165 at Bladeville, the V2 liner, but it's usually around 200 euros. And to buy a full skate for 250, it's amazingly priced. So this is something that we need to talk right here. It's, it's the best bang for buck that you can get with the Intuition liner. So 250 euros for something with the Intuition is amazing. Now, still talking about how these skates feel, this is a skate that it has a lot of fans in the free skate or in the urban skating world, the FR boot. It's a lot of people swear it's the best boot on the market. And it's something that I, I really enjoyed the way it feels. When I put this skate on, I felt no pressure points. I don't know if it's because of the liner or not, but I felt no pressure points. It felt very comfortable. It felt supportive, but it also felt that with this cuff, I could still have enough forward flex, not extreme forward flex. So I don't know if it's a comparison that people would do or not, but I felt this skate skating a bit like a, like another urban skate, which is perfectly normal. But I also felt like this skate was a bit like the M12, which is a skate that I really like the way it feels when I skate like a ball or a transition or something like that. It felt like a super responsive, super comfortable skate. Then it has this 45 degree strap, which is supposed to keep the heel in place. Honestly, I didn't really felt the need for that, but it's, it's cool. It's not, I'm not saying that it should come without it. I just mean that the boot got my foot sucked in in such a nice position that I didn't even felt to feel like tightening a lot. I'm sure if I wouldn't have it, I would say that I would like it. So I like it. I really like it. And I know that they also changed the way that the laces are on these. So if you got the urban version, like the FR1, FR2, FR3, or the FRX, they come with a different type of lacing. Basically, it's like these metal eyelets that come... I don't know how to explain, but it's like a fast lacing system. While on these ones, what they did is they have like the regular aggressive art boot skating uh, eyelets. Basically, it's just a hole on the on the plastic and it it's, it's stronger, that's for sure. It's not going to give you any problems at all. I did not felt any problem with ripping laces or something like that, but I was also not skating street. So if that's something that you would be thinking I wasn't skating straight. Then 
they kept the slider and do you really need the slider? Once again, it's not something that I think you need to, but at the end of the day, it's the image of the FR skate and they wanted to keep it. And it also makes it very flush with this sole plate. I mean, if you wouldn't have these, the sole plate in the front would be sticking out a bit, but because it has the slider, it just looks awesome. Now, if you really need it, yeah, I don't think you do because it's a plastic, shell so if you're gonna be scratching the boot so what it's an aggressive skate but you you scratch the toe you scratch other parts of the skate why don't you scratch on the side but at the end of the day i also know that this is a, a mythic boot that comes from like the slalom skating and the freestyle world where this is very common so why not they kept it cool i like it now other than that what else can i say about this boot before start talking about the sole which is something that in my opinion it's we'll get there in a second Something that I didn't enjoy and I need to say it right away is the buckle. So I like the I like the cuff protection for the buckle But I would like to see a buckle that it's not a plastic buckle. I also understand they were going for Something that would be very low in price. I mean 250 for the whole thing I already say it's amazing, but I would love to see a metal buckle nothing that you cannot change so very easy to change you have two bolts here two screws you can just take those two screws and you can upgrade the buckle very easily and if you are also used to other fr skates you should know that on this one you are not able to change the height of the cuff which once again i don't think it's needed at least I didn't felt the need for that it did felt like it worked great i didn't felt the need some people might need or not now, the magic about these skates, it's obviously where they are completely different from the, the other free skates. If you take the sole plate, you will see that there's this hole here. So when I first knew that FR was making these, I thought they were going to use their common boot and they would make a sole plate that would turn the free skate into an aggressive skate but this is not what they did they didn't do very far from these but they made a couple of changes which in my opinion they made something very unique which i appreciate if they would have made just a sole plate without this hole that would be just a, a raised heel sole plate like the dam skates like the us this way or even like the mesmers you would probably be able to use this sole plate on other skates which you probably still can if you if you use something to fill this space like a a regular raised eel adapter like a 165 to ufs adapter or if you maybe cut these you are able to put these on a ufs skate if this is something that you want to go through you can probably do it but what they did here made these sole plates sit very very good even without having other holes screwing the the sole plate to the boot to then put the frame on top now on these you can have the sandwich system just with two screws without having the sole plate moving around because it really sits very nice and when you have it tight like here you really don't feel it going anywhere in that sense they made something very good would I like to see it differently? I probably would because I would love to try this and I will tell you in a second why I would love to use these on other skates, but we'll get there in a second. But I also know why they did this. The thing is, usually the 165s and the UFS, they are not screwed in the same place. So I was very curious to see what they're gonna do with this because if you're just gonna put like a regular raised heel sole plate on a like a raised heel sole plate on the boot that has the holes for 165 it would be a bit off and that's a little bit of what flying eagle did with the inkido skate now here they had to do changes they had to change the the location of the holes because ufs doesn't have the same location and they did it great now where in my opinion they did the best was right here because these i have never seen a sole plate sliding this fast i honestly have never seen a sole plate this fast I've skated a lot of stuff and I've actually been skating the adapt sole plate on some UFS boots and stuff, but I have never tested 
a soul plate that's sliding this fast and especially with the 50 50 frame that i was skating on this review if you saw the and the the sweat stance that i've done it's not something that i do on that long rail i didn't wax anything i just went for it and the first time that i tried that i went almost till the end and in two three tries i did it it's like it does slide very very good i felt that very very good for the good and also for the bad I, what i mean by that is like the soul tricks it felt very good the negative tricks, even if the negative is not that big, like when I put the thing you see, even if the negative is not huge, they just worked so good. I couldn't complain at all. It's obviously it has to do with the way that the the cuff bends or the way that the cuff works. So it was very easy to do negatives with this. Once again, even without the huge sole space, it worked very good. It slided very fast, but then I struggled a little bit with Royale tricks. With Royale tricks, I could do them, but I felt they were probably a bit too fast. And I usually never say that. It just, I don't know. I've tried it first with, with another frame, with the Master Blade frame. I was skating a little bit with those. And even with the Master Blade frame, which is a very low frame that yes, you are skating flat, but it's not really flat. It's like a high low frame that has 47 millimeters wheels in the middle touching so you have a huge uh, groove and even with that I struggled a bit with some tricks Royals I don't know exactly what it is I don't know if it's because of the location of the groove or if it's because it's it's shallow I don't know exactly what it is but I struggled a bit even skating with anti-rocker which anti-rocker usually doesn't give me any problems but also my frame is new I didn't skated enough in street and this is something that a couple of days skating curbs and i will not have problems with royales or something like that now i did struggle with front side torques on rails i wanted to film like a good torque which i usually try to film a torque on on most of my skate reviews and i couldn't really get one that i enjoyed it so i just didn't film one once again i know that if i would skate it for a bit I would be able to do it, especially skating with anti-rocker, but I struggled a bit more. So what I really think about the way that these skates grind is I struggled a bit for groove tricks, especially like the ones that you need to go on backslide or torque, but the sole tricks are amazing. The way that they feel like comfort wise or performance wise, they're amazing. Something that I also felt about this skate was while doing this review, I was actually trying this skate on one foot and a couple of different skates on the other foot. What I always felt was this skate felt faster and I don't know exactly why. I do know that the heel is, is a little bit higher on this skate and that might be because of the shock absorber built in. So there's this piece of foam that you can't really see there, but there's a piece of foam that it's glued on the bottom of the boot and it's already a raised heel, but Plus with that piece of foam underneath, your foot goes a bit more like that. And what happens is usually when you go a little bit more leaning forward, that makes your skates slower going forward and faster going backwards. This happens in every skate. If you raise your heel, you will feel leaning forward. By leaning forward, you'll feel your skates going a little bit slower. I don't know what they did here, what type of black magic they did here, but I can tell you that it felt a bit faster. So using the exact same frame on two different skates, I felt these going a bit faster. I don't know exactly how or why, it did felt a tiny bit faster. This is something that I felt. But if you're someone that wanna put extra shock absorbers or if you wanna shoot choose your own shock absorbers because i was trying to also put those fp shock absorbers and then i felt it was a bit too much but i also felt that i had no space for those because those are a bit taller in the back so i struggled a bit with that to to find the right shock absorber for this but you probably don't need more because the truth is i don't do gaps but even if i would do gaps i didn't felt anything about doing gaps and you look at guys like Stefan Brando is doing gaps with these he doesn't seem to be complaining so <laughs> who am I to complain about the shock absorption of these and as an aggressive skate that is about it but now if you look at these what you have here is a boot that looks like the regular FR1, FR2, FR3 or FRX but now UFS 
meaning flat surface with a distance of 167 millimeters in between bolts. This means that now this boot cannot just be used for aggressive skating, but if you want to get a big wheel UFS frame, such as the Wizard frame or such as other frames, like Ground Control makes a 3125 UFS, uh, there's the Wizard frame, there's like all these new brands making frames that look a bit like the Wizard, there's uh, Adapt making big wheel UFS frames, there's all these different brands on the market now making big wheel UFS frames and this boot can work actually very good. If you remember a couple of years ago when I first got my first wizard frame, I didn't add the boot that most people use for those wizard type of moves and I struggled a bit to find a boot. Maybe if I would have this boot back then, this would have worked wonders. And yeah, that is about it. This is my opinions about the FR UFR Anthony Potier Intuition Edition. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, do not forget to subscribe to this channel. If you're looking to buy these skates, as I told you, why don't you try bladeville.com? Use code Lino and you're supporting this channel by doing that. And yeah, give me a thumbs up if you like this video. If you didn't like something about this video, give me a thumbs down, but let me know in the comments what you didn't like about this video. And like I always say, just don't forget like ever, ever forget why we all started skating. And that, that is because it's fun. Now, cheers and see you soon. Let me see if I can backflip with this. This is what peak skate performance look like. So